We follow the voice of God. Sometimes God reveals us. Once we listen, if the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Friends of mine, I tell you this, that there is no better time to listen to the voice of God than today. Than today. You see, we are in a period of earth's history where I certainly believe that God is really ready to close earth's history. I really believe that with all my heart. Now, I do not claim to be the perfect Christian that God wants me to be. But what I ask God for, strength every day, is to do His will and His bitterness. Yeah, let us tell you sometimes I'm a bit, I'm a bit bitey. I bite. Hmm. I snap. My children will tell you I snap sometimes. That's not something I'm proud about. I know that's something I need to listen to God. Maybe I need to spend more time in God's way. Just maybe to help bridle my tongue a bit. Because the Bible says that the tongue is an unruly member and nobody can control it. Nobody. And so I, know I need to listen to the word of God and listen to the question that he's asking me. He's asking me today maybe I'm alone this. Can that tongue speak life? Question is for me. Sister Marcy, I don't know what your question is. But God is asking, can these bones live? Because after God has put structure into your life, God is willing and ready to put breath in you. Now I want us to realize that when God put breath in us, He's looking for an army. He's looking for a people that we be ready and willing to testify about his goodness and his grace. The whole purpose of God transforming us, bringing structure into our life, and breathing the breath of life into us is so that we may know that he is the Lord. That he is the Lord. We must remember that when God went to raise Lazarus from the dead, he said that, I come not, Lord, but only to let these people know that you and you alone are God. That's my words. You and you alone are God. God allowed Lazarus to lay in his grave so that he can bring Lazarus to life in the presence of a many multitude. I want to close with this, this passage of scripture. I want to close with this passage of scripture. It's coming from the second book of Kings, chapter 13. The second book of Kings, chapter 13. The Bible says, And Elisha died, and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. And it came to pass, as they were burying the man, that behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. When the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood upon his feet. Imagine that. Mm. Elisha was still dead. But yet still, a man was let down in his tomb. And when he touched the bones of Elisha, of Elisha sorry, he revived. Such is the power of the man of God. Such is the power of the man of God. And sometimes the things that you read in the Bible, it, it, it seems a bit far-fetched, right? But life doesn't really come from man. Life comes from God, and God will give life any way he sees fit. Any way he sees fit. But the question is for you today. Do you believe, whatever the situation is in your life, that your dry bones can live? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do you believe that your dry bones can live? My prayer for each and every one of us today is that we seek God while He may be found. That we allow God to rebuild us 
put structure into our lives and breathe this breath, that vivifying breath, that breath that animates, that breath that brings to life. Pray that God does this for us. But may we listen and be patient and wait on God today. May we not make any rash decision in today's society. With the fast pace and the pulling of the internet and so forth. May we ask God for the power to overcome all these things because these things will be very distracting. You go on your phone just to watch one thing and the next thing you know is four hours to stand on your phone. And the day just gone by. Wasted. Not one minute spent reading the word of God. And these are the things that drive our hope. But after all of that, God is patiently waiting for us to come to him. And he's asking the question, can these bones live? So, Sir Chilis, I want to invite you to come back here now and sing that beautiful song. And after Sir Chilis sings, well, we never will to the evidence. Brethren, let's hold on to God. Let's stay with God. Let's spend time with him. Let it bring structure to our living.